Benjamin Franklin was the first human being to conceive that two glasses could be combined into one and to use them for the purpose of both distance and near vision. Given that he was writing documents and reading the whole day long, he developed this idea for practical reasons, and he should be acknowledged as the first person to conceive the multifocal concept for glasses. How can we create an IOL technology capable of replacing Benjamin Franklin's glasses? A brand new multifocal IOL technology is now emerging, originating from this old idea and transforming it into a completely new one, which is going to change our ideas about multifocality. The first things that we would like to define are the characteristics of the perfect multifocal intraocular lens. The perfect multifocal lens should have a focus which is dominant for far. It should avoid the overlapping of foci, providing the adequate disparity between focus. It should be aspheric in order to improve the optical performance. It should be toric to correct astigmatism and, if necessary, pupil independent to be able to function in different environmental light conditions. Optical performance should be very good in the optical bench and indeed when inside the eye. It should also be stable in the capsula bag, inducing a very low PCO rate. Finally, it should be used sub 2 mm so as not to induce astigmatism and it should provide good visual outcomes for far, intermediate and near. Up to now, all of the intraocular lenses that have appeared on the market are based on the rotational symmetry concept. They are made with concentric circles, either refractive or diffractive, which provide images generated in an area of 360 degrees. The light is scattered on the foci over the entire lens, causing the following main disadvantages. Loss of light, permanent overlapping of images, causing halos and glare, loss of image quality and contrast sensitivity function. We're going to explain the concept of rotational asymmetry. In rotational asymmetrical lenses, the light is refracted to the near focus only on a specific sector. The rest of the lens behaves like a monofocal lens, so the main advantage of these new principles is that more light should go to the furthest focus with the following consequences. Increased contrast sensitivity function, less duplication of images inducing less halos and glare, better image quality. And this is the new concept comprised in a new lens. In this lens we have a sector that focuses the light for near only. The specific improvements in the optical geometry of this lens are that most of the lens is for far with an area for near. The lens is semi-meridional, divided into optical sectors, creating a truly pupil-independent intraocular lens. The very steep semi-meridional transitions between the reading and distance sectors of this lens minimize the reflections in the direction of the optical axis. When the light hits the transition area in the embedded sector, this will be reflected away from the optical axis. This prevents any superposition of interference diffraction, normally caused by curvature variations on optical surfaces. This will result in a minor loss of light intensity and at the same time a significantly improved contrast sensitivity. No ghost or double images should be propagated and significantly less glare and halo effects should appear. These images for far and for near are clearly separated and will be exactly in line with each other without image jump on the concentric optical zones produced by either refractive or diffractive rotational symmetrical intraocular lenses. Overlapping is thus reduced and neuroadaptation will play a minor role in the performance of the lens. How is this lens implanted? Two millimeter length incisions are enough for the implantation following the principles of minimally invasive cataract surgery. The lens has to be grasped in an appropriate position and should be taken to the cartridge of the injector with the tiny dot protrusion facing anteriorly. We use the oculentis injector into which we insert the cartridge and the plunger will push the lens out of the cartridge. Using corneal assisted wound technique, the lens is injected inside the capsular bag and the trial haptic is inserted in a second maneuver. The lens has to be rotated and placed with a notch inferiorly located and two lines defining the sector placed horizontally. The total surgery is performed through incisions of 2 mm. Then the viscoelastic is removed and the surgery is finished. This is how the lens looks at the end of the surgery, with the sectors indicated with the lines and the notch, which means that the lens is correctly placed inside the capsular bag. 
Using ray tracing, we have simulated this journey of how the focus are created along the transmission of the light refracted by the lens in this particular optical geometry. This particular light distribution causes a minimal loss of light. The lens keeps an almost constant light distribution for pupil sizes between 2 and 5 millimeters, with the energy distributed in each of the foci being about 60 to 66 percent of the light for far and about 40 to 42 percent of the light for near. This creates a far focus dominance which improves neuroadaptation. The clinical results in our personal clinical experience are outstanding. Patients obtain good visual outcomes for far and for near with excellent intermediate vision. Thanks to the particular geometry of the lens, they refer excellent visual performance in all of these distances and under different light environmental conditions. When residual astigmatism is corrected, the far vision results are outstandingly good, with all of the patients being better than 0.8, that is 2025. The best spectacle distance corrected near visual acuity was a minimum of J3 in all of the patients, whilst 85% of the patients showed J2 and J1 with excellent intermediate vision at the same time. The defocus curve shows that for J1 this lens provides a depth of focus of 3.5 diopters and with intermediate vision qualified for J3. The contrast sensitivity function is at the limits of normality and this lens corresponds to the contrast sensitivity of a middle-aged person. The optical analysis shows in this image an excellent MTF function with an outstanding bidimensional PSF. In spite of the sector, these lenses do not induce coma aberration as shown in the internal aberrometry. The mathematical convolution of the optical quality data shows here the simulation of the quality of vision of one of the implanted eyes using the Snellen charts. In conclusion, using this new concept of multifocal IOL, we have obtained excellent visual outcomes for all distances with a very low incidence of halos and glare and improved contrast sensitivity by reducing the loss of light with excellent neuroadaptation, minimal induction of aberrations and very good spectacle independence with excellent objective optical and intraocular clinical performance. Finally, Benjamin Franklin had an idea which was successful in his times, and now this concept has been successfully developed today for the benefit of the patient, thanks to the improvement in the optical technology leading to a new generation of multifocal lenses. We thank the ideas of the past, and we welcome today's new ideas, which will eliminate the need to use Benjamin Franklin's glasses. I really wanted to dispense with glasses, mm -hmm. not particularly for vanity reasons, but because they're on, they're off, they're in, you know, a lady's handbag is huge, so when you go to hunt for your glasses, you can't find them, yeah. you know, so, um, and also, you were speaking to people, and you had to lift the glasses to the top of your head, and even worse, you sort of like a school marm, you had them perched from the end of your nose. Mm -hmm. I began to notice, my, particularly my long vision, becoming slightly blurred and certainly nothing was as distinct. Um, I was also finding that particularly when I drove the glare on my eyes was very very noticeable. It was, there was no pain involved, it was possibly uncomfortable, but nothing else. Uh, and I think thinking about the operation is an awful lot worse than the operation itself. 
the, the sort, I mean, I'm squeamish about ice, let's be honest, but I got through it and it, it was not, it wasn't painful, no, no, it wasn't painful and um, it didn't last very long either, so it was all dealt with very well. So. instant and you know you can you can look at the labels and things you can glance down and read things you can sit at pet yesterday at a petrol station I was able to sit there and read everything which you know it would all be a blur mm -hmm. so I can actually see the way I used to be able to see. The M plus lens has been fantastic just just to have your first eye done and get the patch off and after two or three hours uh, the difference in your sight, the brightness, the clarity, um, you just don't realise how bad your eyes had been until you get the, the operation done.